our first sponsor vehicle. I just want to mention, uh, I want to put these guys first um, because um, they're doing something special called the mobbing workshop and they're doing Laravel challenges kind of throughout the day. So um, if you're interested in learning more about mobbing, which is sort of like a pair programming offshoot, I have not done it. Um, check that out. Link is on the digital swag page. Um, so they're going to be just in there hanging out all day, working, you know, kind of doing this mobbing workshop and then running different Laravel challenges. So if at different points you want to go sling a little code, then check that out. Link on the swag page. And we're going to do a quick video to introduce vehicle to you. Vehicle is a Canadian dev shop located in Southern Ontario, specializing in providing custom web development in frameworks such as Laravel, Vue, and many other JavaScript frameworks. Our 60 person dev team works with dedicated clients and their existing dev team to help build exceptional web and mobile applications. We act as an extension of our client's team, working with them to ship clean, consistent, and maintainable code. Our goal is to help you guide your team into building products you can be proud of. Here's how we deliver on that promise. Our foundational values are caring, growth, and delivery. We seek to provide a caring environment that enables our team to focus on growth. This in turn allows us to deliver for our clients. We are one team with our clients and we share in their successes. We take pride in our strategic growth mindset, adapting agile practices to get the job done. Our normal engagements consist of two dedicated developers working week in, week out as a direct extension of your internal team. So what does working with us look like? We have daily communication with your team. We collaborate with you on weekly or bi-weekly sprint planning. We provide demos and retrospectives at the end of each sprint. We work with your team to have collaborative PR reviews, and we have daily pairing and mobbing sessions to ensure we ship high quality code. Mob programming is a form of collaboration that eliminates dev block in a creative space that promotes growth, learning, and knowledge sharing. Overall, we work as an integrated part of your team. Our goal is to make you look like a superstar. We love giving back to the tech community. So if you'd like to learn more about us, be sure to check out our podcasts or YouTube channel where we talk about Laravel and the many other technologies that we use. We organize and sponsor JavaScript and PHP meetup groups in our community. Find us on Meetup or on the Meetups at Home YouTube channel for many of our recorded past meetups. We also attend conferences. We usually bring our entire team to Laracon to enable each member of our team to network and grow within the tech community. We also wanted to give a big thank you to everyone at Laracon who helped host this online event. And to thank all of you for attending, Vehicle is giving away your choice of an iPhone 12 Pro or a Samsung S21 Ultra. All you have to do is opt into our emails and you've entered. But enough about us. We want to learn about you. We would love to have a conversation and learn what you've been working on. You can visit our website at www.vehicle.com or send an email to go at vehicle.com or connect with us on our socials to keep up to date with us and the Beacalian culture. We look forward to hearing from you and thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the conference. Okay, come back on here. Okay, thank you again to Vehicle. Um, go check out what they're doing over from the Shrive page. Um, and let's get started. Let's see here. You bring in Mohammed. Just a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, there he is. Hello, Ian. Hey, I can hear you. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're good. All right, great. I can hear you as well. Pretty excited about today. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right, well, you're the first one. You got to kick us off here to a good start. 
Yeah, hopefully people will enjoy my talk. It's almost like it was the first talk for the for the last Laracon. And the, there is a lot of pressure on the person giving the first talk because you have to make it look exciting and you have to prepare the people and wake them up for the rest of the conference. So hopefully That's I can it. do that by the end of the talk. I think you will. All right, good okay. luck. Take it away. Thank you. I'm sharing my screen right now. All right, I okay. should be sharing my screen. Yep, you're good. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself at first. My name is Mohammed Said, and I am a web developer at Laravel. I live in Cairo, Egypt. And uh, I enjoy swimming, I enjoy uh, diving, cycling, and running. And I enjoy making videos on the YouTube channel, the official Laravel YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Laravel PHP. Today is a special day for me. It's not only the Laracon day, but today is my fifth anniversary at Laravel. So, as I shared, this is a special day for me for so many reasons. I've been with Laravel for half its life. That's insane. Laravel have been up and running for 10 years and I've been with them for five years. So it's half the life of Laravel as a company or Laravel as a framework, which is pretty insane. Here is how Taylor used to work more than five years ago. He would work on tasks one by one. He would start on task number one and then move to task number two and then three and so on. And that's basically was the capacity of the Laravel company in general. So when things started to move faster, the company needed to do more work. Like if we're saying that Taylor was able to do seven tasks a day and the company was able to do seven tasks a day but the Laravel community became larger and the company had a lot of products, so they needed to do more work. And that's why Taylor decided to add a new worker. Hello there, that's me. By adding a new worker to the Laravel company, this allowed Taylor to delegate tasks to that new worker, myself. That way he had more capacity to work on more stuff. By assigning tasks to me or delegating tasks to me, he was able to add more tasks to his plate. So in general, the productivity of the company has increased. It can now finish 10 tasks in the same amount of time it used to take to finish seven tasks. The key to this productivity boost is communication. Taylor would communicate with me and assign a task. He would tell me, Muhammad, you should do task three, four, and seven today. And then ask me to ping him when the tasks are done. This communication allowed the company to be more productive by working on tasks in parallel instead of in sequence. This is called asynchronous task execution. And the benefits of asynchronous task execution should be obvious to you right now, but here is a list of the key benefits. Different tasks can be executed at the same time. As we have seen, while Taylor is working on something, I can be working on something else. And a task doesn't have to wait for another task to finish. If the two tasks do not depend on each other, they don't have to wait for one another. And finally, tasks don't have to run on the same machine. If you are talking about asynchronous task execution on a machine rather than a company or a team, tasks don't have to run on the same machine. If you have a task that requires a lot of memory allocation, you can run it on a machine that has enough memory to run it. While the, if there's another task that requires any other kind of resource, you can put it on a dedicated machine that is uh, capable of running this task in the most efficient way. Similar to a team working on tasks, a computer or a machine has multiple cores. So instead of company has multiple workers, a machine or a computer has multiple cores. Each core can work on a single task at any given time. Having more cores means that the machine can finish more tasks by executing them in parallel. 
Modern machines now have more than one core. Most modern machines have more than one core, and that's how they can uh, do a lot of tasks uh, in parallel. While core number one is working on task one, core number two is working on task number 10, and so on. So that's how they, it does a lot of tasks in parallel by assigning them to multiple cores. This allowed the machine to work on 14 tasks instead of just nine, which is the capacity of a single core. Tasks on a computer are mainly two types. There are CPU pound tasks and IO pound tasks. CPU pound tasks are ones that require computation like mathematical computations, video processing, search, search algorithms, and graphics rendering. And IO bound tasks do some work and then wait for the output or the outcome of this work. These are things like sending HTTP requests to an external server. You send the request and you wait for an, a response or an output. Sending an email, communicating with a third party library, Interacting with databases, the machine sends to the uh, sends the query to the database server and waits for the output or the response from the database server. Similarly, interacting with a cache server, you send something and you wait for the output. So that's the difference between CPU pound work and I/O pound work. A core can only do one thing at a time. If that thing is a CPU pound task the core will be fully busy during executing the task and cannot do something else. However, the operating system won't allow a single task to block the rest of the machine. It will force switch to other tasks and work on them concurrently. This is called context switching. So instead of working on the blue task and block all other tasks, the operating system will start working on the blue task a bit and then switch to the orange task, back to the blue task, switch to the green task, back to the blue task, the red task, and then finally back to the blue task, finishing it. So this context switching will allow a single machine or a single to core to work on things concurrently by switching between them very fast. You won't notice it and you will think that the tasks are running in parallel, but actually they are running concurrently by the operating system switching between them. IO bound tasks, on the other hand, are different. These tasks do some work, then wait for output, and then does some work with this output. This gray area in the graph here represents waiting. The core is idle, idle during this time. For example, it's sending an HTTP request and then waiting for a response from the third party server. All this waiting, all this gray area, the core is just idle. It's not doing anything. The operating system uses this waiting time to switch to different tasks so the core doesn't stay idle while there is work to do. Imagine if, the, if there is an IO bound task and the core will just stay idle, not doing anything while there are a lot of tasks waiting to be executed. For that, the operating system won't allow that. It will switch to other tax, tasks while a task enters a wait state, which is pretty smart. Now, a PHP program works in the same way, similar to a computer machine. Multiple processes handling requests in parallel. Now, when a request is received, process number one receives this request, and while processing it, another request comes in, and process number two is free to handle this request. After it finishes, another request comes in, start working on it, and then when a, the fourth request comes in, process number one would be done with request number one, so it will start handling request number four, and so on. That's how the uh, PHP program handles incoming requests. For the PHP program to be able to handle more requests, we either need to add more processes or make requests run faster. Adding more processes is easy. You just start processes on the machine. But after some time, the machine won't be able to run more processes than a certain limit. You know the machine has limited resources, so after some time, you won't be able to start any more processes. So when you reach this point, you will need to handle requests faster to be able to handle more requests. 
Also, handling requests faster is a benefit to the user experience anyway. Even if you don't have any scaling issues, handling requests faster would be nice to the user. To handle requests faster, we can run tasks concurrently within the request or send tasks that the request doesn't depend on to the background. But nothing will have major effect on speed as optimizing your code. If you use fancy asynchronous libraries, if you use concurrency, if you use all the fancy new tools, but your code is not optimized to run fast, you will not really gain a lot of benefit. So the first focus, if your problem is that you need to hand requests faster, you need to optimize your code, you need to optimize your queries, you need to optimize your calls to third-party libraries or calls to the uh, cache server and so on. So optimizing your code comes first before you start thinking about concurrency or sending tasks to the background. So a general rule to decide between running tasks concurrently or sending them to the background is that if you are expecting the results from the task to be able to continue handling the request, then you should run the tasks concurrently. On the other hand, if the request doesn't need to wait for the results, then you may send the task to the background. It's like fire and forget. You just send the task to the background, forget about it and respond to the user and terminate the request. Let's take a look at an example request. This request here starts, does some work, which is the first blue part, and then sends an HTTP request, waits for a response, does some work with the response, then sends a database query, waits for a response, do some work, then uh, executes a cache command, wait for the response, then continue with the request, then send an email, wait for the third party like service that's sending the email to finish sending the email and respond, and then finish handling the request and terminate it. All the gray parts you see in this graph are IO bound tasks. The tasks start and wait for output before continuing with the rest of the request. For those green tasks here, the HTTP request, the database query, and the cache command, we must wait for the output so we can continue with the request. We need to wait for the output from the request and the query and the command, and we use this output to continue building the response uh, to the user. For the orange task, however, which is sending the email, the request doesn't have to wait. We can send a response to the user and terminate the request before the email is actually sent. We don't need to let the user wait until the email is sent. To make this request faster, we may run the green tasks here, the HTTP request and the database query and the cache command. We may run them concurrently and send the mail task to the background. So when the request starts, it will run the HTTP request, the database query and the cache command concurrently and then dispatch the send mail task to another handler, dispatch it to another process, another whatever to take care of sending the email actually dispatches the task and then immediately send the response to the user and terminate the request. It won't wait for the email to be sent. Now let's see how we can achieve that. A process starts, executes, and then terminates. A core can only work on a single process at any given time. To run tasks asynchronously, we can use multiprocessing, which is to start multiple processes to handle tasks in parallel. A process will start, do some work, and then terminates. Each of these processes has its separate memory space. Starting and terminating processes is relatively expensive on the system. These are one, this is one of the downsides of starting multiple processes. The more processes you start, the more overhead you put on the system. Also with the starting more processes, con context switching will increase, which is an overhead on its own. So besides the overhead of starting multiple processes, switching between them is also an overhead. 
Multiprocessing is not actually the most performant solution for asynchronous task execution for the reasons we just stated. One of the main things about, or the main benefits of multiprocessing when it comes to asynchronous task execution is that each process has its separate memory in a space. Like if you, there are two processes running in parallel, one process cannot access variables, cannot access anything in the other process. And that's benefit that simplifies the PHP execution because we don't have to worry about memory management in PHP application because we are mostly using multiprocessing. But it's not the most performant solution, as we said. So let's look at another solution, which is multi-threading. A thread is a segment of a process. It lives in the same memory space as the process. So they share multiple threads inside the process. They share the same memory space. Starting and terminating threads, however, is easy on the system. It's not as heavy as starting and terminating processes. However, the overhead of context switching is still there. The operating system switches between processes and threads alike. With the same memory space being accessed by different threads at the same time, risk conditions may happen. And that's why multi-threading can make things very complicated as we try to avoid risk conditions. Finally, we have coroutines, and some people call them fibers, other, people's call, other people call them green threads, but in this presentation, we're going to call them coroutines. And coroutines are like threads in that they have the same memory space of the process they run inside. They share the same memory space. However, unlike threads, coroutines don't execute at the same time. If you can look at the graph, you can see that they don't run at the same time. A coroutine starts and then stops, and then another coroutine starts and stops, and then another starts and stops, and so on. So even though they access the same memory space, they don't run at the same time. Also, there is no context switching between coroutines on the operating system level, which removes the overhead of context switching on the operating system level. The runtime controls when the switching happens, which is less expensive than the operating system context switching. So inside the process, you may start a coroutine, that's the red coroutine in our example, and when it enters a wait state for doing any IO task like uh, IO bound task, like sending an HTTP request, running a database query, or executing a cache command, when it enters a wait state for doing any of this, the uh, coroutine will yield to the runtime, and the runtime will switch to another coroutine while the first one is waiting. So the first one enters a wait state and it switched to another coroutine. And when it enters a wait state, we switch to another coroutine and keep switching until all the coroutines are done. With the knowledge we have so far, let's start looking into asynchronous task execution in Laravel. This has been all an introduction. Sorry about that. The way to achieve asynchronous task execution in Laravel is by using multiprocessing. We said it's not the most performant, but it's what we are going to use mainly, and maybe we can use coroutines. And I will explain why maybe in just a bit. Now, a typical Laravel application runs on several processes. There are requests handling processes and worker processes. Request handling processes hand the requests one after the other. So process one handles request one and then moves to request four. Process two starts working on requests one after the other and same for worker processes with tasks or jobs. We can send tasks from request handling processes to worker processes to run them in the background. And the way this works is that the request handling process dispatches the task to the queue and worker processes will keep fetching tasks from this queue. As long as the queue has drops, the workers will try to fetch drops from this queue. Whenever a worker is idle, it's not processing any drops, it will fetch a drop from the queue to process. This part in the Laravel framework is called the queue component. It uses multiprocessing to handle tasks asynchronously in the background. And even though I say that multiprocessing is not the most performant solution, it has been doing great for PHP for the past decades. 
We, have, we are using Laravel queues in Forge. We are using it in Envoyer. We are using it in Weber, and it ha, it's, it's doing great. It, it allows us to scale to an amazing level and serve tons of users and serve thousands of tasks every hour. So even though I'm saying it's not the most performant, I'm not saying that you should avoid it. It's actually doing great. Each Laravel application ships with a queue.php configuration file. You can find it under config queue.php. And inside this file, you can configure multiple queue connections and use multiple queue stores. So by default, it ships with a database queue store, an SQS queue store, and a Redis queue store. You can use any of these to store jobs. And to create a task, or a job in Laravel terms, you create a class with an invoke method and you put the business logic of the task inside this invoke method. Then inside controllers, you can dispatch the task to the queue using the dispatch method. All this method does is store the task in the queue store. It won't run it. So in our case, it should be sending an email. It won't send the email inside the controller method. It will just dispatch it to the queue and let the queue send the email sometime later in the future. Sending the mail here will not happen inside the controller. This saves a lot of time by default, like sending an email takes maybe a second, but dispatching to the queue will take a few milliseconds. So we are saving a lot of time. Once you dispatch the drops, you need to configure a process monitoring tool like supervisor. And this tool may start and manage worker processes by running the PHP artsync queue work command. And you may configure any number of worker processes you want to start. In our example here, we are starting 10 processes to uh, uh, consume drops from the queue. Now, instead of sending the mail while, send, while handling the request, we are dispatching it to the queue so another worker may work on it later. This cuts the request handling time because we don't have to wait for the mail to be sent. And when a worker picks the job up, it will work on it in the background away from the request handling. And when it's done, it can ping the application user by uh, updating a database record, sending a notification, or broadcasting an event. That's the communication we were talking about when we were talking about the Laravel company example. So that's basically how you run tasks asynchronously in the background in Laravel using Laravel queues. Now let's take a look at these remaining tasks, the HTTP request, the database query, and the cache command. We want to run them concurrently but we must wait for results before continue handling the request. So we cannot send these to the queue because we need to wait for them to send uh, results or we need to for their output in order for us to be able to continue uh, handling the, uh, the request and sending the response to the user. So we want to do something like this, have a way to run the three tasks concurrently and then wait for the results. And after we receive the results, we get them in uh, such like a similar uh, variable assignment. Once we have the results, we can continue handling the requests. Luckily, we have Laravel Octane. It's the latest offering from the Laravel team. It's a composer package that you may install in your projects. Easy, you can install it very easy. You can find more information about Octane in, on github.com slash Laravel slash Octane. And Octane offers a Roadrunner server and a spool server. To achieve concurrent task execution in Octane, which is a topic of this talk, we need to use the Swool runtime. And Swool is an open source PHP extension for asynchronous PHP. It's actively maintained by a team of brilliant programmers and Swool actually adds a lot to PHP, more than just asynchronous task execution. I personally have huge respect to the team maintaining Swool. The way it works is by having request handling processes and worker processes similar to the queue. But the difference is that queues run by dispatching tasks and workers fetching them later. With Swool, Swool works by dispatching tasks and the Swool manager will assign those tasks to worker processes. The manager will wait for the tasks to finish, for all the tasks that you sent to it to finish, collect the results and send it back to the original process. So it's not fire and forget. The Swool manager will wait, the process will wait for the Swool manager to bring the output back. 
So without the concurrency capabilities of Swool, request handling will do tasks one by one and wait for them. But with the Swool concurrency, the handling will be faster because the tasks will run concurrently on multiple worker processes. While the HTTP request is being handled, the database query is being handled, and the cache command is being handled as well. And all we have to do to achieve this is call Octane concurrently. This method will send the tasks to the Swool manager and wait for all of them to finish and then collect the results. With Swool plus Octane, we can handle tasks concurrently in Laravel. And with Swool and or with the Q component, we may handle tasks in the background. And that's how to achieve asynchronous task execution in Laravel by using multi-processing. Multi Send the task to the queue if you don't have to wait for it and send the task to the school manager and wait for its results. But what about coroutines? Let's jump into that. Our request here has three IO bound tasks. Tasks wait for output to come from third party HTTP server, database server, or cache store. That's a lot of waiting here. Without coroutines, the tasks will run one by one. But with coroutines, the Task, one first task will start, and then when it enters a wait state, the second task will start, and when it enters a wait state, the third task will start, and then the Swool manager will wait for these tasks to finish and start collecting the output of these tasks one by one before finally complete or sending the output of all the tasks to the request for it to be handled. So with Swool coroutines, we achieve the concurrency without the impact of multi-processing or complexity of multi-threading. We cut the request time by waiting for the three tasks at the same time, and we don't need to start worker processes because a process is relatively heavy and no race conditions will happen because a single coroutine runs at any given time. They don't run concurrently or in parallel. They don't run in parallel which is great. That's something that would be great to our applications to make uh, our requests faster. And you are probably now like, show us how to use coroutine. And I'm like, we can't, unfortunately, not yet. So let me explain why. Without Swool coroutines enabled, a process handles requests one by one. If we enable coroutines, if we enable Swool coroutines, Swool will switch between handling multiple requests concurrently automatically. We can't control that. Swool will switch. Whenever a request starts an IO bound task and enters a wait state, Swool will switch to handling another request. Swool does that so request handling becomes faster, so a process doesn't stand sit idle. But the problem with that is that the framework cannot handle this request level context switching. To handle that, we will have to make huge changes to the Laravel container. And that's why we can't use coroutines in Laravel right now. Luckily, this may change soon. Bruce Do, which is one of the main contributors to Swool, posted this tweet recently about a prototype, prototyping a new feature that will allow us to set a maximum top level concurrency, which will allow us to stop this request level context switching, which will help us a lot. With the new feature, requests will be handled one by one. But inside the context of the same request, we can switch between multiple coroutines. When, the swool, when this swool feature is released, we need to work on connection pooling for database and cache uh, uh, connections in order for the application to be able to switch between different tasks inside the same request and use different connections within the same request because you cannot use like, a, for example, a database connection to send multiple uh, queries. So we need to do some work when this feature comes out of Swool. So as I said, I really appreciate the work the Swool team have been working on. And if you need to learn more about Swool, you can check the swoolbook.com website. They offer, Proust, though, the contributor we were talking about, have this book, which contains a lot of information, not only about Swool and asynchronous task execution, but about how machines work under the hood. And if you are interested in uh, the Laravel queue component, I published a book last year called Laravel queues in action. You can find it at learnlaravelqs.com and there is a discount 
uh, discount code in the swag for the conference where you can get it at a discounted price. And if you prefer videos, recently I published a series on Laracasts about Laravel queues, and you can find it at laracasts.com slash series slash Laravel queue mastery. That's that if you prefer videos. So thanks everyone. And thank you for watching this talk. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter at dempsey.com. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Great thank job. You. Thank you.